Hello class of 2023 and congrats on being done with your first year of medical school. Amber Chess here from the Office of Academic Success and I've made this video to introduce you to the USMLE Step 1. In this video I will discuss your timeline, tools for studying, dissecting questions and annotation, retention strategies, and resources available. Here's a timeline from now until your Step 1 exam. As you can see, it is recommended that you register for your exam by December 31st, 2020. I will run a few live Step 1 sessions during the fall, one of which will cover the registration process and requirements. A CBSE practice exam will be administered in the spring of 2021, and your ISP will take place from the end of HC, which is March 29th, 2021, to May 23rd, 2021. You must take your exam by May 23rd because transitions will start on Monday, May 24th, 2021. Ideas for summer. Relax. I cannot overstate the importance of giving yourself a break this summer. You don't want to return to school already burnt out. And this year has been extraordinarily difficult. You need a rest. Do not feel guilty doing this. Familiarize yourself with resources. I'll go through the suggested resources in a few minutes but you might want to spend some time this summer seeing which ones you like, and many of these resources offer a free trial so you can try them out. Research. A lot of you will make time for research during this summer, and that's great. If you feel up for getting the ball rolling on step prep, and you do not have to do this, but if you'd like to, consider starting with one of the big four systems presented during first year, or something that you know you are weak in. Here are the big four. Tools for studying. Most everyone preparing for step one uses UWorld, First Aid, and Pathoma. UWorld, as you know, is the gold standard as far as question banks go for step one prep. Sue in Student Affairs is currently working on obtaining a UWorld subscription for you and your class. Please note that this is a six month subscription, so if you are going to start prepping over the summer using UWorld, you will need to add more time to your subscription on the UWorld website. First Aid is a high yield textbook that reads more like an outline. Many of you are already familiar with this resource. As you start to prepare for step one, you want to make sure that you have a clean version so that you are able to annotate in it. A new edition comes out every December, but you don't necessarily need the newest edition. You can check for updates in the newest edition on the first few pages and compare it to your version. Pathoma videos and text are also quite valuable. You can access a free trial by visiting their website. There are many other commonly used resources, but be careful not to spread yourself too thin with these. I really only encourage you to reach out to these resources if you know that you have a weakness in a particular topic. Here are those that are popular with your upper class peers. A few years ago, we surveyed students after they received their step one scores to see what they would recommend to the classes below them. Here's what they said. You can see that there is wide variation in when they recommend you start studying. You can also see which resources from the school they found to be helpful and some tips that they gave, such as using flashcards, being flexible and in incorporating wellness activities, and starting to work first aid into pearls. Question-based approach to study. Dissecting and diagnosing questions and annotation. I recommend using UWorld questions to learn from. What I mean by this is letting the questions guide you through the content that you're studying. This is an effective way to prepare for exams, and many of you probably already used a similar method when preparing for the MCAT. In UWorld, there are several options. At this stage, it is recommended that you complete the questions untimed and in tutor mode. Select the system you'd like to study, and UWorld will produce a block of questions for you. Work through the questions, one by one, with the intention of learning as much as you can. Your intention is not to self-test yet, so don't get upset if you don't know the right answer. You're only using UWorld as a learning tool. Let's say the first question pops up. You read the question and you know it. Great, think about the answer, uncover the answer choices, and if your answer is there, select it. UWorld will then show you if you got it right or wrong and provide a rich explanation. Read the explanation carefully, paying close attention to anything you didn't already know. You will have your copy of First Aid open to the system you are working in. After reading the UWorld explanation, flip over to First Aid. Read what First Aid has to say about it. 
and anything that you learn from UWorld that isn't already in first aid and isn't already in your head, that's what you're annotating right into the book. If a question pops up that you don't know, don't just guess. Take a step back and teach it to yourself using whatever resources you'd like. This could be the suggested text from your courses or Boards and Beyond videos, whatever you like, in order to answer the question. Think about it like an open book test, then return to the question and answer it. Hopefully you got it right. A few reasons why this method is more effective than just guessing is because you're encoding the information in a way that makes sense to you, making it your own. You're also doing the legwork of learning, a desirable difficulty, forcing you to slow down and remain deeply engaged with the content rather than just passively guessing and reading the explanation. This improves long-term performance. Of course, this takes a lot more time, but the benefits in understanding and retention are worth it. Annotating. As stated before, most students annotate right into first aid. You'll be adding any relevant information that you don't already know. For every disease, you should know the pathogenesis, course complications, clinical presentation, including risk factors, and diagnosis and therapeutics. And for every drug, you'll want to know the class, indications and contradictions, common and important side effects, and the mechanism of action. Start to think about building a framework when going through your questions. This will help you determine what to annotate. Let's take a look at a sample question. Here are some things you might ask yourself to frame your learning. Okay, now let's try a pharmacology question. Consider these questions to frame your learning. Retention strategies. If you're going to be spending effort and time to start prepping now, you must consider how to retain the information you're learning long-term. Let's first talk about a couple of learning strategies. Two strategies proven to help with retention are spaced repetition and retrieval practice. Spaced repetition is seeing the content you're studying broken up over several sessions rather than all in one sitting. Five hour studying spread out over two weeks is much better than the same five hours in one sitting. Retrieval practice is simply bringing information to mind from memory. Anki automates these two strategies, but it also has its pitfalls. Anki should really be used as a finishing tool and not as a primary resource. Also, Anki can lead to rote memorization, which creates a problem if the content you're learning is presented in a novel way on a different question. And this will happen. Odds are you're not going to see the question asked in the exact same way that your Anki deck asked you it. What you want to do to ensure that you're using Anki correctly is force yourself to elaborate on every card. Some ways to do this are to ask yourself these questions. And please know that not everyone uses Anki. I have seen many students who don't do very well on step one. So if Anki doesn't work for you, you don't need to try to force it. An alternative to Anki is a UWorld journal. To do this, create notes to help you learn and reinforce challenging topics from missed questions. You might post questions for yourself on this document in the margins that you can quiz yourself off of. This is basically a notebook or a digital document that you keep as you learn from questions. If you Google UWorld Journal, there are several examples online. The idea is that you are taking notes in a simplified way, making review easy and effective. You should aim to review your journal at least every week. Finally, there is the study burst method for long-term retention. Details on this method can be found on the OAS webpage under USMLE Advisement. Resources available. Members of the Office of Student Affairs are available by private appointment to discuss wellness-related issues. We also realize that studying for Step 1 can be one of the more difficult times in medical school. Counseling services are available through the Office of Student Affairs or can be found at the bottom of every weekly email. Additionally, faculty members will remain available for help within their content areas, so feel free to schedule appointments or use their office hours. And finally, I love talking about all things Step 1 related. You can set up a private appointment with me by emailing me. 
I hope to hear from you.